Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I am sitting in the backyard of my Portland, Oregon food forest. You can see a little bit of the rain garden behind me, a little construction debris since my partner and I have been doing some home improvement projects when we have time and when lumber prices are not obscene. Um, I wanted to talk today about the recent heat wave that we just had. And when I say recent heat wave that we just had, it is still 95 degrees today. I'm sitting out here sweating like crazy. It is very unseasonably hot still for Portland, but we're on the back end of this heat dome that we had for the last few days where it reached historic temperatures that Portland, Oregon has never seen before in recorded history. Yesterday it was 116 degrees Fahrenheit at the Portland airport, which is very close to my house. And we've just never, we've never had temperatures that high before ever. So I thought, let's look at what did well in my garden, what didn't do well in my garden, and how we can harness the permaculture principles to take the data, the observations that we make about the last few days and plan for the future, plan for a climate change future, plan for resiliency. Over the next several days, it's predicted, predicted to still be quite hot in the Portland area and I think plants will continue to struggle. So I wanna take a uh, snapshot in time here right after we've had this incredibly hot sunny weather and then continue to look over the next several days maybe the rest of the summer depending on what it's going to be like I don't know yet and get an assessment of what is going well and what isn't in my garden and I want to use that information I want to take those snapshots and put together a collage and use that information so that I can creatively respond to change I can take the adverse weather events that we're having and make my garden more resilient and hopefully make my family and my home more resilient as well. Now, I don't have the ability to design on a larger systemic city county level. Um, I actually got a comment when I shared one of my videos recently about the uh, heat wave we're having in Portland and it was from someone in Phoenix and, and I totally get it, I totally get it. A lot of places are used to seeing temperatures 110, 112, 114, but y'all live in a desert that's acclimated where, um, I know when I grew up in Tucson, we lived in an adobe house with a swamp cooler and like a big back covered um, area that was uh, very shady and shaded the whole front of the house so that, um, the whole south side of the house, I should say, so that we didn't have intense sunshine coming in. Portland homes, Portland businesses, Portland infrastructure is not designed for desert living. It's not designed for high temperatures. And um, that means that we suffer more because we lack the experience and the application of experience to um, create more resilient conditions for surviving hot weather. Now, the other side of this is that we still have cold winters that y'all don't have. We still have freezing temperatures. In the winter, in fact, we had we had some significant cold episodes this winter and quite a bit of snow that we're not used to. So in Portland, um, I know when folks talk about climate change, they often talk about um, larger temperature swings and they talk about more unpredictable weather and weather patterns being more inconsistent and making it harder to plan. And that's very, very true. It's good to have known quantities, known um, elements in your system so that you can plan. And when the temperatures are not what you are used to, don't follow uh, patterns over history. It makes it much harder to plan in advance. So Portlanders were ill-equipped for this heat wave and uh, that's not our fault. That is not the climate pattern we are used to here. That is not what June is typically like here. And so when people say they are suffering, their livestock is suffering, their plants are suffering, keep in mind, we are not acclimated to um, temperatures like this and we don't have infrastructure for temperatures like this. We have designed for a mild rainy climate. We've designed for slugs and moss and algae and mud. We have not designed for very hot, very dry, very sunny. And our plants are not evolved um, and are not adapted to those conditions.
So let me walk you through some um, footage and snapshots of my garden that I took throughout the day today and talk about some of the things that I noticed including uh, some elements where my garden really struggled and I probably could have prepared better. And some of those ways I knew I could prepare better and I either just didn't have the energy or the time or the financial ability to get on top of those, but um, the solutions are there, I just didn't implement them. And for next time, I think I will. But some things did very, very well and I've noticed that some plants are really thriving just doing unbelievably well, growing huge amounts over the last few days. Let's talk about um, what I'm seeing and what I think the takeaways are from those uh, observations. Right off the bat, I noticed some sunburn on some of the perennial herbaceous herbs that I neglected to cut back because they were still in full flower. The ones I cut back hard before the heat wave all look really good, but this valerian in particular got some sunburn. Here in the Sun Trap annual veggie patch, you can see that just about everything is doing really well. The winter squash, runner beans, tomatoes, peppers, summer squash, all doing exceptionally well despite the blazing hot temperatures. Now a few of my bush beans and a few nasturtium leaves got a little bit of sunburn, but it's very minor. Most of the plants look big and strong and healthy. I think it made a huge difference to water every morning early in the morning. I need to stress here how important it is to use mulches in your garden. Whether it be a thick layer of wood chips or other chop and drop plant material or living green mulches, it helps conserve water and protect the soil as well as sequestering carbon. It's good to note that any of the sun-loving annual veggies that prefer hotter weather did very, very well in this heat wave and grew a lot. Even some of my perennial veggies like the tree collards here put out lots of new foliage and had no sunburn whatsoever. But again, I do have a thick layer of mulch around my plants so they don't get heat stress. Moving from the annual veggie garden into the rain garden, you can see how the rain garden is designed as a water catchment system to collect water off the roof and pergola of the house. Because of this, there is a lot of rainwater stored in the ground and the rain garden has been thriving even though I have not watered it during the heat wave. With the exception of the one valerian plant who got some sunburn, everything else is doing quite well and has been a safe harbor for lots of honeybees and bumblebees during the heat wave. In hot weather, bees exhibit a behavior called bearding in which they hang and festoon off of the front and sides of the hive. It is a way that they help cool the colony. It's super important during this time that you provide sources of shallow water for the bees to use to help air condition their colony, protect the honey, wax, and baby bees. Stepping into the side yard garden, we pass the quince, which had no trouble handling the hot weather. But this is where we move into the part of the garden that struggled the most. This area is very sunny. And unfortunately, my raspberries got some pretty significant sunburn. You can see the white on the berries and the crisping of the leaves. I was pretty upset, but also knew that this was my own fault as I should have put shade cloth over this part of the garden. I just did not have the time to get it done. Now, lower down, where the berries are protected by the upper layer of burned foliage, the raspberries and leaves look great and the plant will recover. Something to think about for a climate change future, all of my blueberries in full sun had significant sunburn on leaves and fruits, far more than any other plant. 
So stepping past this young, immature bed that was part of my driveway just a few years ago and looking into the more mature portion of my front yard food forest, what you can see is that the closing canopy has created a safe haven that is really good design for a warming climate. Here you can see my grapes did really, really well. They seem to be enjoying the heat immensely. Even though I recently pollarded my largest overstory tree, this portion of the food forest seemed really well protected, both from too much sun and from water loss. My peach did great, no sun damage whatsoever. Looking down at this Carolina allspice bush, you can see that it flowered quite well during the heat wave and also no sun damage at all. If you are looking for food producing shrubs for a warming climate in the Pacific Northwest, I heartily recommend the Fijoa. Not only did all of mine continue to bloom heavily during this period, but also this slow growing shrub surprised me by growing several inches during the heat wave. I had lots of new growth on all three of my plants. Rubus and blueberries here in the shadier parts of my garden fared far better in the heat wave and have me thinking about how important food forest design is going to be if our summers are going to be hotter and warmer. The only damage I saw in this part of the garden was a few sunburn leaves on some of my pawpaws. Now, had my pawpaws been younger, I would have covered them completely with sheets or shade cloth as they are an understory tree and can get sunburned very badly when they are young, but mine are quite mature and doing very well. If I'm thinking about a more resilient design moving forward into hotter and drier summers, I realized that I need a better water catchment system. Watering every morning was crucial to my plants doing well, and right now I am dependent on the very expensive municipal water supply. Thank you so much for all your kind thoughts and inquiries after my poultry. As you can see, they are doing really well. They were very protected in the understory of my orchard here in the backyard. So as I spend time in my garden after this heat wave, making observations, taking note of what is doing well and what has had a hard time in the heat wave, I want to think about how I can change my design, how I can accept feedback from mother nature about the ways that I can improve the resilience of my design. So while this was a really difficult few days, I also want to take it as a learning opportunity, an opportunity to help me become even more resilient and help my system function even better. So I have a lot of thinking to do about changes I may need to be making throughout the next year or so. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate all of the thoughtful comments people leave and I appreciate particularly the shared experiences from folks who live in different parts of the country and the world from me. We talk about permaculture being site specific design, but when we're talking about climate change and isolated uh, 
adverse weather conditions, we can learn from people who regularly experience and have designed for those conditions. So they may be anomalies for us, or they may be new for us, but we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. So I love hearing comments from folks who say, oh my gosh, this is, I'm old hat at this. This is something I experience all the time, and here's how I deal with it in my garden. Those kinds of comments um, and interactions make us all stronger and more resilient. The exchange of information and ideas, the sharing of experiences and innovations helps us all become more resilient people. So thank you when you share your thoughts and what works for you in your garden. I learn from that and I grow from that and hopefully other people reading those comments do as well. So thank you for doing that. So thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and check out my Patreon down in the description. I'm also working on some other projects. I've gotten a lot of requests to do more videos on um, homesteading, homemaking, domestic and culinary things that I don't often feature on this channel. There's a lot more to my skill set and experience than growing plants and keeping bees and ducks and chickens and permaculture design. And part of permaculture design is being resilient across a wide range of skills. So I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about some of those domestic skills and culinary skills and I will be sharing more of that soon. Actually, um, I'll be uh, dropping some hints for a little bit and when that is ready, I'll be unveiling it hopefully in the coming weeks. So thanks again for watching. Please stay cool. We still have another week of hot temperatures. Hopefully things will start to cool down after that and uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of your garden. I'll be back soon.